May 11th, 1983. This is Joe Todd, an interview with Mr. Tony Lackey. Mr. Lackey, where were you born? I was born at uh, Weatherford, Oklahoma. And now out on the farm. And when's your birthday? April 24th, 1919. Who was your father? J. Lackey. Initial J or J A Y. J A Y. And who is your mother? Etta E T T A. What was her maiden name? Broadus. B R O A D U S. B R O A D D U S. D D U S. Were they both from Oklahoma? No. Uh, well, uh, they uh, their folks homesteaded. Uh, Dad <clears throat> came to El Reno and worked, he was at Fort Reno, and they homesteaded at, uh, in rural Custer County, between Weatherford, Custer, and Thomas. Is this your father? Yes. Hmm. And mother came from Kentucky, uh, her folks came out, and they met, of course, were married in El Reno, my wife and I were married in El Reno. Now, was your father in the military when he was at Fort Reno? No, he was a civilian. What did he do out there? Both horses, Bronx. Uh -huh. He was a early day. They broke broke horses to to for the cavalry. He worked for the cavalry. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing about my family, Joe, uh, there was thirteen of us, and uh, we were cotton farmers. My father, during the Depression, uh, we uh, we had a difficult time making it. Uh, if it wasn't hadn't been for the chickens and hogs, and milk and cattle, we raised it. We couldn't have made it. Now, did your did your father draw a farm? Was this in the Great Lottery they had in 1901? No, his folks did. His folks did. Mm -hmm. so this he, is they lived, he lived. They lived in the dug house. Mm -hmm. That's your grandfather. Yeah. Uh -huh. What was his name? Uh, John. John Lackey. Uh -huh. And he drew a claim. Was that 1901 when they had the lottery? Well, uh, this this was the Indian territory up there. It was the last strip. Okay. And I don't remember just exactly when that was. Uh, that he did homestead a claim then uh -huh. and proved up on it. Mm -hmm. Did your grandfather ever talk about the sod house, the dugout? No, we had pictures. I had they had pictures of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got a picture of my father breaking Broncos. Uh, at Fort Reno? Uh-huh. Uh, would that fit into your... It certainly would. Would it? Definitely. Good. I'll, uh, I'll accumulate all of them and... Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's a handsome man. His mm -hmm. mother was a... Yeah. Yeah. And you say that your father was a, a cotton farmer. Uh-huh. Uh and uh, you were raising the farm then in Custer County. Yes. And... Uh, during the uh, Great Migration to the California, you remember the Dust Bowl? Mm -hmm. We couldn't raise anything, and we sold out, and uh, he sold, and we came to Oklahoma City where we could be close to jobs and uh, and uh, or school. We'd have access to school, and mm -hmm. that's where I went in the CCs after my freshman in high school. As a child, what did you do on the farm? What kind of chores? Well, we milked a bunch of cows, 15 or 20 cows. We, uh, we uh, raised hogs, and we raised chickens, and we had a garden. Then we'd take care of them, and then we'd go to the field, and we'd plant the cotton, we'd chop it, and then we'd pick it. Tell me about chopping cotton. 
oh, listen, we only had one pair of shoes and we'd save them for Sunday. In the summertime, our feet would burn. We'd dig down. We'd dig down uh, to keep our feet from burning, you know. We'd go barefooted because we just had one pair of shoes. And because uh, we wanted to save them for Sunday mm -hmm. and special occasions, we didn't want to get them dirty. That was, they were precious. A new pair of shoes were more valuable than a hundred dollars. Mean more then than a hundred dollars would mean now. Now was weeding cotton and chopping cotton the same thing? Well, both. We did both. We did both. We, we did it out and uh, and uh, chopped. Yeah. Chopped no. out the weeds. Okay, chopping can, cotton, is that thinning cotton out? Chopping uh, means you went along and if it's too thick, you thinned it and got the weeds with it. You killed two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. How much could you pick in a day? Oh, three, four hundred pounds. They, we, we, each one of them depends on how small we'd start out with a little sack. If we got bigger, we'd get bigger sacks. You know? What was the price of cotton back then? Oh gosh! <laughs> oh, Dad, clear about forty-five dollars for five hundred ba uh, pound bale. Mm -hmm. Where was the gin? Custer City. Custer City. Mm -hmm. Who ran the gin? Do you, do you remember? Uh, yeah. Oh, Lord, help me. Well, after I turned sixty years old, uh, I begin to. Forget names. Uh, I mean, uh, I was in freshman to high school with this boy. Uh, I think. Oh gosh, they run the grand grain elevators. Let's skip that and go on. Let me uh, okay. fill in that later. I How did it. the gin operate? Uh, they had a vacuum pipe. They'd sucked it up from the wagon blower. And then the, <clears throat> they had... Uh, they had a sort of a, a tray uh, that the cotton fell on and they separated the seed from the cotton and put the seeds on one side and the cotton the other. The cotton would go into a big bale and then they'd wet. That's what you get. How did them. they pick the seeds out? How did, how did that work? Uh, they, they had a machine, the, elevator, the, the, the cotton gin instead of the elevator. It was a cotton gin. The elevator was for the wheat. Cotton gin. They had a uh, machine that uh, uh, it's difficult to describe it. Uh, they did have a term word for it, but it's been so long. But they would they would they would uh, pull us cotton. You know how nice cotton is, Joe mm -hmm. Gillum. Pull it plumb out of the seed, a real hard seed. Cotton seed meals where you feed cattle. We'd have it ground up and uh, take it home for our cattle. And uh, then when the cotton was put away, it was time to uh, pick the corn. And then when the corn was put away, we'd go down to the creek and chop wood. We didn't have no modern conveniences. I, st I studied studied by lamplight. What kind of house you live in? Well, it was just a small uh, frame, uh, real, uh, real uh, simple. Mm -hmm. You how have many, your stove and kitchen and... Uh, how many rooms? Oh, uh, three. Three. And we all sleep, three or four of us boys and the girls sleep together and the boys sleep together. And we, Summertime, we'd sleep outside where it was cooler. We mm -hmm. had no air conditioning. The cellar, we dug us a cellar and we'd preserve our food in the cellar where it was cooler, you know. 
And uh, the greatest day of our life was 4th of July. We'd get ice, have iced tea and make ice cream. That was a great day. Where'd you get the ice? From town, they'd deliver it. An old Model T or a wagon. They'd deliver it once a month. Now, is this from Custer City? Where yeah. It came? Uh-huh. How do they make the ice with the plant? Um, uh, well, at that time, they had Freon, and uh, they'd free, uh, freeze the water in blocks, then they'd cut it. Uh, to go on, uh, be interesting to uh, make a note before I forget it, talk about ice. Uh, our company in 875, when we finished the amphitheater in Lincoln Park, constructing it, and we finished our job here, we went to Whirling, Wyoming, and I went up in the mountains, and that's what we done in the summertime, uh, in the wintertime, we cut ice off from the lakes up in the mountains and uh, stored it down into buildings with sawdust and hay for people to have ice in the summer. That was one of our jobs. Yeah. And you say your father sold out in the Depression mm -hmm. in the 30s. 1933, 34. Mm -hmm. Came down. Uh, what was, what did you think when Roosevelt plowed into the cotton? And killed the hogs. And yep. He, he did that in cattle too. Well, uh, we weren't, uh, we were so desperate, Joe, that uh, we couldn't truly evaluate it at that time. We thought, uh, now really, uh, what did I do with my glasses? Uh, I'm not that fine. Uh, we were mired in, in the great, greatest depression that ever was. And uh, we, would, we would travel, there's only one uh, man in there. In that community that had a radio and we'd go in the wagon or buggy until we got our first Model T, Model A car to hear uh, Coolidge and, and Hoover and then Roosevelt. Roosevelt came in whenever we came to the city, but uh, we were mired in the greatest depression in the history of uh, America and uh, uh, we would listen to anybody you know, later uh, supply and demand does run up the price, but it it does uh, uh, deprive poor people. Of course, we couldn't preserve meat and stuff uh, then like we can now. We could have fed a lot of people, you know. Mm -hmm. Now the Indians, we were we were right in the middle of the, Indi the plain Indians. And we had a black leg broke out, and we didn't know what it was. It came from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, it killed about all of our cattle. They liked to wipe us out. And the Indians would come in wagons and cut that meat up and take it. And they'd eat it and save their hides. Yeah, hmm. you betcha. What Indians were they? They were the Rappy Hole Rappy. and the Cheyennes. Mm -hmm. Did you ever visit their, their villages, the yes. Indians? Mm -hmm. What were they like? Well, have you ever been to uh, in, uh, have you ever been to uh, Anadarko? I've been through it. Indian City? No, not to Indian City. Well, you ought to visit it sometime. Mm -hmm. They have poles, tall pole and a tent, and they live right in the tent, mm -hmm. cooked outside, and. Uh, uh, of course, us kids were, we used to, I'll tell you how we made our spending money, Joe. We, uh, Indians saved their lives. Somehow or another, they would manage to get a few nickels and dimes. Of course, they always drove pretty, had pretty horses and wagons. 
We'd catch turtles and sell them to them for nickel or big ones to bring them down. When it rained, boy, we'd hustle. We wouldn't have to work the field. And we would uh, catch turtles. And that, they'd come through there. We knew what day they'd come. And we'd come, we'd stop them. What kind of turtles were they? Soft shell, mm -hmm. uh, hard shell, I mean. Western, western. These are, you see them across the road. Yeah. They make good turtle soup. Indians loved them. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we made, uh, that's the way we made our uh, spending money. Yeah. Where'd you start school? What? Where did you start the school? High school or oh, grade school? Elementary, grade school. In Pleasant Hill. Oklahoma, eight grades. Pleasant Hill. Uh huh. Who was your teacher? Your first teacher? Uh, Mrs. Nils Paul and Mrs. Walsh, W A L S H, and Mrs. Beard. We had to take our eighth grade examination, county exam to pass in days. Tough as heck, boy, before you get in high school. Did you go through high school? Uh-huh. Well, I got I got some of my, uh, yeah, I have, uh, yeah, I have uh, two college degrees. Hmm. Where did you finish high school? Um, Custer City. Custer City. But I got, I got some of my credit in the CCs, you know, you had to go to school, too. I learned to type, and I got my business, and hit. I got all my, my but my senior history and uh, my credits were transferred to Custer City. And you moved to Oklahoma City in '34. Uh huh. Where'd you move to? What part of Oklahoma e City? We moved out on a farm east of Oklahoma City, where I had the first electricity. Hmm. How far east? Oh. Between on East 23rd, uh, the South off the 10th, about uh, even with Midwest City now, Midwest City, what would be eight or ten miles? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have a farm over there then? Mm -hmm. Then we, uh, kids all went to school there, and I went to the CC's, and then from there I went. Uh, what made you join the CC's? Uh, how did you hear about it? And... Uh, <clears throat> well, as you know, uh, there were 13 of us, and uh, I had wonderful parents. My mother was the greatest person in the world. She died 64 years old. Really. That's pretty young now. Mm -hmm. She worked herself to death raising those kids and scrubbed on the scrub board. But anyway, uh, it was customary for us without being told that uh, when we got up big enough to make our, make our own way is we just moved out and make room for the next one to come along. You know, you take 13 kids in one family, that's a pretty good sized family for a small house. And uh, uh, the uh, Roosevelt orchestrated this bill through Congress, uh, uh, establishing these CCCs, and uh, it evidently uh, saved the life of about uh, the maximum capacity at one time in the late 30s was running around 4 million young boys and girl, uh, young boys and, and a lot of them couldn't read or write uh, and uh, we read about this and I asked uh, mother and dad if I couldn't join and uh, get out on my own and they consented to it and I went to Colorado and stayed six months and, and then uh, I came out at Lincoln Park and that's where we 
we started our uh, Lincoln Park period. Yeah, how was the CC organized? I mean, do you have uh, companies or groups or... You said you were in number 875? Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Okay. Uh, it was... Uh, It was a army type of atmosphere. We set up barracks. Did you build the barracks or were they already there? Uh, they moved them in. And, uh, uh, and it, they were, uh, it was an army type of uh, atmosphere with a lot of flexibilities. They were bar army barracks, and the they were run by army reserve officers, mm -hmm. and the interior department uh, officers were from the interior department, and then the the actually uh, discipline part it was administrated by an army reserve officers, mm -hmm. and uh, they sent 150 of us here at Oklahoma City, and we were get up in the atmosphere of barracks and mecca beds and uh, we had three good meals hot meals and uh, we'd go out and work all day and, and then in the afternoon uh, you uh, went to school participated in something and uh, you had your art and, and they had uh, created the been to school and typing. I learned to type, and, uh, and I got some a lot of my credits in there. Now, is this high school credit or college credit? High school. High school credit. High school credit. What was the average age of the seventeen majority? to nineteen? Uh -huh. And uh, I was so desperate to get in, and uh, and I wanted in so bad that. Uh, I uh, got a little mixed up on my, I didn't know my, didn't try to learn too much on what year I was born, and I got in two years young, younger, but they didn't say anything. That's, well, that's off the record. Uh, mm -hmm. They wouldn't have done anything, you know. You know, it, it wasn't, uh, that wasn't enforceable like the, like a, uh, the Air Force is today, or something like that, where you had to show your birth certificate. We didn't have to show a birth certificate. What was your salary? Thirty dollars a month. We sent twenty-five home, and uh, and uh, we kept five dollars. Now, did this? Now, what about meals and lodging and all that? Was that? Were you given your meals and a place to stay, or did that come out of your thirty dollars? No, that was uh, that was uh, th that was uh, separate. Our meals were free, and our clothes—we got our clothes too, army type of clothes. Sure did. Well, that sounded like a pretty good deal, then. Oh, it was a good deal, and I eventually worked up my way up to assistant leader. They didn't have corporals and sergeants. They had leaders. They made forty-five. What was the just? And I was assistant. I made thirty-six. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you say there was a leader. Uh, the person that'd be the buck private. What was he called? Just uh, a common everyday worker. He was called a. Uh, uh, well, uh, enlisted man. I don't think they had any. Uh, any specific name, but yeah. an assistant leader would be a corporal. You've mm -hmm. heard of corporal. Oh, yeah, right. Well, now, that's assistant leader. Okay. And a sergeant would be a leader. Mm -hmm. And would there be the equivalent of an officer in the CCC? Would what? Would there be the equivalent of an officer? Like a sergeant was a leader, would there be an officer? Who was over yes. the leader? Yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> or can you just explain they had a the commanding. Whole... They had a commanding officer. And then they had a uh, second lieutenant. A, the commanding officer usually a captain reserve. Mm 
Okay, these are the Army Reserve officers yeah. you mentioned, okay. The captain was the commander. Okay. And uh, the, uh, the assistant was the lieutenant. Mm -hmm. And they were overall in charge. Then they had the educational supervisor, mm -hmm. uh, which would be a, a, from the Interior Department, which would be equivalent to Army officer. But he, was on a, he wore civilian clothes. And then you had your medical officer, who was the what we know as the doctor, infirmary, a medical doctor, and he was the usually a retired medical doctor, mm -hmm. and he was there. And then you had your infirmary. Mm -hmm. Then you had your field men. You had usually about three or four. Uh, Foremans, they call them, from the Interior Department. Now, were they over the leaders? They were over the leaders, right. Mm -hmm. And the leaders took orders from, uh, just like a sergeant would a lieutenant. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, from, can you explain who took orders from who? You had the enlisted man, the assistant leader, the mm -hmm. leader. Right. Then who was above the The leader? sergeant. They did have the first sergeant. They did. They called him the first sergeant. Just like they did in the army, yeah. enlisted, but he was enlisted man. Right. He was over everybody, but he was the only army ranking one. Now, where did the that foreman got the title? In? Where did the foreman fit in for the interior department? Were they over the officers or no? They were under. They were between the officers and the, right. the leaders. Yeah. Okay. Their job was to, away from the away from the barracks, mm -hmm. out in the field. That was their job to see that we. Completed the amphitheater. Okay. That was their job. The army officers seen that we uh, stayed in the barracks and uh, got our meals and got paid and got medical attention and uh, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Did you have military regulations to go by? Uh, yes and no. We had... Uh, we had uh, uh, certain rules. We couldn't leave uh, and just come back when we wanted to. We had to be in a certain time, and uh, we only got to leave a certain amount of leave each year. I got to come home once or twice a year. Where I was near home, I got to go a little often if you was near home. Mm -hmm. But they were there were some flexibility, but uh, uh, they weren't bed checks, you know. Mm -hmm. But the next morning, if you you uh, way you're disciplined, if you couldn't uh, obey the rules and stay in camp, they just discharge you. you know? That's all. Is that yeah. simple? Yeah. Uh, Let me show you a picture okay. here. Uh, Joe will explain something. Captain Barry, I can explain that. Captain Barry was the commander, and here's the second command. Mm -hmm. And uh, here's the educational advisor, and here's the doctor. Now, he's the Army. Okay. He's on the civilian. See the uniforms? So yeah. he's a med medical okay. decision. And uh, now Company C, Company 875. Uh huh. Now, yeah. what does Company 875 mean? Well, that was the number of our company. Were they just numbers? Everybody had yeah. numbers. Were they just all numbers over the United States. Numerically, just from one to whatever? Uh, well, in numerical order, but uh, I think they started up, uh, they didn't start with one, and two, and three. Uh, Oh, that's CCC, not Company C. I see. Okay. Yeah, this that's is CCC. Civilian Conservation Corps, okay. Company, company 875. Okay. How many companies were there in the U.S. total? I don't know for certain, but they were in every state in the Union, and uh, they had uh, over 4 million at one time. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma had several. Uh, now, these were the field men here. Okay. Their job was uh, 
their job was uh, was to take care of the outside work and everything. 1937 ch champions ball players. Yeah. And this for the whole CCC? No, yeah, for the whole uh, country. Oh, we're from Oklahoma. All the CCs, yeah. This the uh, eight seven five. Uh huh. Hmm. Uh, can you can you pick me out there? You recognize me? You don't know me well enough here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Out there, mm -hmm. top row. Mm -hmm. okay. Here's a dam we're building, but that's in Wyoming. Wyoming. Yeah. Um. Huh. What book is this? This is my annual. Memories of Civilian Conservation Corps. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all boys in there. And, uh, this is the fun. Uh, that's just mm -hmm. the fun, fun side. Here's some pictures. They let us, they let us on the weekend wear civilian clothes. Now what? After four o'clock. Yeah, did you have regular army fatigue that you wore? Uh huh. On on duty, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did they decide where to send you? What was the priority? Uh, you mean uh, like you went to Colorado first, then you came to back to Oklahoma City. What well, was the priority in the projects for the CCC? I asked for transfer <clears throat> in Colorado. They they were uh, concentrating on uh, terracing lands, and uh, I wanted closer to home, and I got, I transferred to uh, I got a transfer here to to uh, Lincoln Park. So you could, and then after uh, after we completed Lincoln Park, uh, they had another group down to Sulphur building that park, and uh, one in the eastern part doing in the forestry department building roads. Then we decided they'd move us to Worland, Wyoming to start building dams for the sheep and cattle men. Uh, whenever they finished a, uh, uh, we were here a little over two years. At uh, Lincoln Park? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever we finished uh, a project, a major project, and uh, objective was uh, completed by the, uh, they moved us on. Mm -hmm. um, Um, which project was high priority, whether to build dams or build amphitheaters or do terracing? How did they select what project to do? Joe, uh, each state, under the provisions of the Civilian Conservation Corps law, uh, each state was to set up their own priorities. And whenever... Uh, that need in that particular area was completed. For example, our our uh, objective in Oklahoma City was to build the first nursery, and we worked with the WPA and built the zoo and planted all those trees and uh, completed the amphitheater. Then our uh, our objective was uh, after it was uh, completed then uh, they <clears throat> determined there was no further need for company 875 in this location and there were greater need in uh, Wyoming so they got permission to move us to Wyoming and uh, this 
company down in Sulphur, if any additional work needs to be done, they could finish it up here. But each state set up their own priorities and uh, objectives and projects to work on. And then once once all those were mm -hmm. uh, were completed, then they they were eligible to move on. Okay, who in the state selected the projects? Was it the governor, the governor staff, or who did the actual selection? Well, it was based on the the uh, conservation. Uh, uh, the uh, the governor and the mayor. Of Oklahoma City and uh, set up uh, and the uh, council set up the priorities and needs for Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. their objectives, and uh, of course Lincoln Park was. Yeah. One, one Who did it statewide? Was there a statewide committee that selected I projects? Just, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, was there one state commander in chief? Of CCC, was a one man in charge of the whole state. As general, as general, uh, in Washington uh, would put uh, would select one retired highest ranking officer in Oklahoma at that particular time, and I don't know the the uh, person who that would be. You know, um, uh, the. W.S. Key was, oh, he was W.P.A., wasn't he? Key. Yeah, he was he, in charge of all the armories they built. Armories, yeah. Uh -huh. But that was W.P.A., though. Yeah, that was I think so. Now, you said that you worked with the W.P.A.? Yeah. They 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 collaborated with us on the, on Lincoln Park. They did. Now, how did the CCC compare with W.P.A.? Well, of course, the W.P.A., there was a lot of difference. W.P.A., was the work project administration where uh, uh, families, the men, needed jobs, and uh, they were sent to a project, and they, at the end of the day, they would go home. Mm -hmm. Whereas we stayed in camp, we was under the uh, auspices of uh, the uh, the army, uh, army atmosphere control. Mm -hmm. That was the principal difference. Okay. Do you have like a basic training that you had to go through, like in the army? Not, uh, not per se, no. no. But, um, like when you built the amphitheater out here, if you weren't a stonemason, did you have to learn, or how did they select who did what job? Uh, the CCs, we had our own engineer and own. Uh, uh, architects and they designed them in their building and uh, of course we didn't have the modern uh, machinery that we had now we had an old caterpillar tractor but the amphitheater was by and large built by hand uh, my uh, one of my uh, principal jobs was uh, the, in the landscaping aspect of it I did uh, help do all the landscaping who did the actual stone cutting? Do they have stone cutters? Or? Yes, the WPA uh, uh, cut the stones, and uh, we 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 did the laying on them. Okay, they had, uh, I guess, a guy from Washington or someone that was trained as a stone cutter, and he did the stone cutting. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they, did. they didn't send you out with picks and shovels, and you. No, we didn't cut our own stones. Okay. No. Uh -uh. They cut them for us and we uh, or tucked them in and we laid them. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then the landscaping. and uh, Who picked the site for the amphitheater? Well, <clears throat> I don't know who the architect of the park was. Uh, it is the vision uh, to build... Uh, the amphitheater at the end of the uh, uh, at the end of the uh, park, which we did at the, the as you know the zoo. Mm -hmm. At the end, they wanted the zoo, and then they wanted this lake. They made the lake, you know, and uh, then they they uh, 
dug, put in all the rocks for the animals in the zoo, and we we planted all the shrubbery. Then there's a vision uh, that they build this amphitheater at the end of it, where they could have entertainment after they had visited the uh, the zoo, and uh, the. Uh, the ideas, uh, I'm sure, uh, they always ask us for ideas. I'm sure most of the CC boys uh, uh, should receive credit for the vision of uh, uh, entertaining the, the idea in the site, where the mm -hmm. site should be. Where the, Who was the architect of, of the zoo? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But your main job was landscaping? For the zoo and the amphitheater. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. How many men were working on the? One hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty. Was that all? Eight seven five. Uh, eight seventy five. Uh huh. That's excluding the cooks and the and the uh, office help. You know, mm -hmm. I expect uh, I expect all that gather there was at least a hundred of us doing one way or the other. That is the. Nursery part, the landscaping, the the rock land, and uh, the most amazing thing about this project, it was done by hand, most of it. It was done by, by shovels and picks. Was that lake? Was that lake built by hand then? No, well, no, I think the lake was did with the bulldozer. But, you mean like the walls and everything? and. But the landscaping and the dug yeah. out by hand, and okay. most of the amphitheater was. Have you been in it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is the 150 the what? average size of a company? Yes. 150 is the average size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long did it take to complete the zoo? Uh, we were. We were. A little over two years. Is that the zoo and the amphitheater together? Yeah. Both uh, we were about uh, 30, 36 months, almost three years. Mm -hmm. When did you begin? What year? Uh, in, uh, in 34. 34? Mm -hmm. And you completed. Let me give you the exact dates on that. Okay. Uh, I got them down here because I looked them up and. Uh, In the spring of 1934, Company 875 was uh, established and the bridge were erected. The exact location was about three blocks from, uh, mm -hmm. from the amphitheater and uh, uh, and I, I arrived July the 18th. It's, it, the amphitheater was started in the spring. It took uh, and we finished up in October in '36, so uh, so we were uh, just about 16 months building that amphitheater. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, now, when you say barracks, are they permanent barracks, wooden barracks that were yeah. built? Well, they would sit on a block. You know. Yeah, yeah. And did you have like communal showers, or what? How did the the sanitary conditions? Well, we had have running water. No, we had outside mm -hmm. restrooms. What there. about showers, baths? How did well, that work? Well, we uh, they were makeshift with uh, with uh, running water uh, barrels. Okay. You know. Yeah. With a canvas around yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Can you tell what your average day was like from the time you got up, breakfast, work, to the time you went to bed? What was your average day like, work on the amphitheater? Like what time did you get up? 
you mean how I felt personally, or what was a typical what was a tip, day? typical day like? Uh, <clears throat> we usually was up by six o'clock. First thing we did was dress, and it was mandatory that we we make a bunk up. They were all bunks, and uh, by the time we uh, we washed, made our went to the latrine and washed and made our bunk. The bell would ring for uh, chow for breakfast. We'd eat and then would fall out for roll call, like the army type of roll. Then we'd board our the pickups or the trucks, depending on where you were working, what project we're doing, we'd go to our job. And uh, <clears throat> there we'd, we'd perform a job and they would bring, uh, uh, sometimes they'd bring sandwiches or uh, once in a while we'd have a hot lunch if we weren't too far, but usually mm -hmm. it was lunches. We'd be back in at four o'clock, would clean up the boys who participate in sports or baseball went out rest after supper would go to class till nine o'clock and they were enrolled in, uh, in whatever they were enrolled in mm -hmm. and uh, by 10 o'clock we were back in our bunks and uh, ready for bed by 10 10 30 was the Lights were out at 10.30, and that was mm -hmm. about the normal procedure. Very little, uh, very little uh, entertainment, you know, mm -hmm. except recreation, uh, the uh, seasonal sports, you know. Mm -hmm. We had no, we had no, uh, we had no uh, gymnasium. Or any facilities like that. It was all whatever we did. It was outside, you know, weather. Now you played baseball and softball and softball. Yes. Any other sports you that you participate in? Uh, that's about all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Played a little basketball in mm -hmm. Wyoming, but baseball. What did you do in Colorado? The first assignment. Uh, terraced lands. What part of Colorado? Trinidad. Okay. Mm -hmm. that is. That's southern Colorado. Southern part, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, so you could request a transfer then? Yes. To different areas? Well, uh, <coughs> under certain conditions, yes. Okay, do they send the whole UN-875 in Colorado? No, this uh, 1801 was uh, in Colorado. Uh, I was on there six months and came back, uh, but 875 was here and we went to Wyoming. Okay. And how were you assigned to these different companies? Just at random? or? Yes, at random. So your first assignment was Colorado number 1801. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you requested your transfer back right. to Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. Then the whole company went to Wyoming. Right. And you built dams. Of course, yes. How long did you work for the CCC? How many years? Uh, I <clears throat> I was with them about three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About and three years. Uh, I went uh, in thirty four, uh, thirty five, thirty six, about four years altogether. Uh, one year I was out, one year. 39, finished up in 40, I went in military service, went overseas for four years. Mm -hmm. and then uh -huh. came back and got my college, done my college work. Um, Which for was the last one? Yeah. Um, was it easy to get a transfer? No, I was I was pretty young, and uh, I think my father 
got me, uh, might have been some politics, mm -hmm. got me back here and he helped me. We got in close to home here mm -hmm. and uh, it, uh, they, they tried to discourage it, you know, to keep more stable boys, but by and large, the kids were, uh, <clears throat> they, they were receiving food that they'd never received before, hot meals, a, a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. They were getting fruit that they never got before. Uh, we had tutors and uh, to help the, teach the boys to read and write and, and read their mail for them, you know. And uh, they were very, it was so much better than their home conditions. Uh, so, so we didn't have a tremendous turnover. You said you worked your way up to assistant leader? Yes. What were your duties as assistant leader? I was a caterpillar tractor uh, bulldozer operator and uh, barracks uh, in charge of the barracks. What did you have to do in the barracks? Well, to see that uh, the boys made their beds and see that uh, duties were performed, uh, such as keeping coal to the stoves and keep the barracks clean and uh, reporting uh, uh, things like that to the uh, sergeant. Did you have to be a peacekeeper between? Well, you had to sort of be a, a, a leader. Uh, I think that's why I advanced uh, so quick and fast in the Army was my experience in the CCCs mm -hmm. as a leader. Yeah. I uh, became a tech sergeant and I was, I had several, at times had several hundred men under my command, mm -hmm. a non commissioned officer, and I, I contribute that to, uh, to uh, my experience in the CCCs. Yeah. Uh, in the late 30s, of course, I assume that you were aware of what was going on in Europe. You know, yes. Nazi Germany was on the rise and everything. Mm -hmm. What was your feeling about Germany at that time, late 30s? Did you feel we'd have to go to war with them eventually? We felt like that, uh, that uh, something was going to have to... Uh, happen to ever establish any peace mm -hmm. over there. We weren't surprised at all that we were called in the service. We were mentally kind of prepared for it. So, uh, uh, and the nice thing about it, uh, we were so young that we didn't have any fears at that time. Mm -hmm. you know. Now, uh, I couldn't take it, you know. But uh, uh, the war clouds gathering in Europe about that time, we all uh, talked about a lot, and uh, we uh, certainly wasn't looking forward to going to war fighting, but mentally we were kind of prepared for it, yes. Now, did you enlist or were you drafted? Drafted. 1940? I was in, I was in not 41. Year I got married. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was uh, uh, going going back going to getting ready to go to college when mm -hmm. I was drafted. Not at that time they was taking everybody. What unit did you did you get put in? I was in the medical corps. Medical corps. <clears throat> uh, we took care of the wounded and overseas. We were the first group in Europe and the last to leave. Where'd you land? We landed in uh, Scotland. When, Rom when Romwell, the German commander, liked to have the British run out of North Africa, mm -hmm. we, we went, we set up hospital units in Scotland and got patients from Africa. And then we made the invasion of France and then uh, with D-Day, yeah. Did you go in with the first troops? No, but we took uh, we we received the patients, the wounded. Okay, when did you hit Fortress Europe? D-Day plus what? 
uh, well, we stayed uh, across the canal uh, channel, okay. taking care of the, the wounded. Mm -hmm. They was giving us the the. Uh, we didn't go in, uh, you know. Uh, we set up field hospitals for that. The field hospital would uh, would would pick up the wounded soldier and put him in a on a boat, a helicopter, and uh, rush him to our uh, hospital. They had helicopters in. Uh, not helicopters, but they were airplanes. Little airplanes. Yeah. And they, we, I call them helicopters. Yeah. They were small. Yeah. So they just ferried the patients yeah. back and forth on boats yeah, mainly across, across the channel. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what you know? You in? What was the sixty seventh General Hospital? And what were your duties? I was a. Uh, I was a technical sergeant in charge of wards, and we set up, uh, when Eisenhower was uh, preparing for the invasion, he was in London, when he was preparing for the invasion of Normandy Beachhead, uh, the commanding officer called me in and uh, wanted me to set up a uh, special ward. Uh, and my job, uh, the, the the officers that went off mentally, pressure, nervous breakdowns, and uh, uh, I was to take care of them. I had men to take care of them, and we had to guard these wards. And uh, my job was to to uh, take care of the wounded in the wards after they got there. See that the boys taken was taken care of. Where'd you go through basic? Fort Bliss, Texas. Fort Bliss, El, Texas. Uh -huh, at uh, El Paso. I went to uh, medical schools six months, uh, eight, eight months at uh, Fort Sam Houston. Fort Sam Houston. Mm -hmm. Got all the medical training there. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a licensed medical nurse. I never did do it. I went out, you know, I guess in real life you'd have to renew your license, you know, but uh, I went into teaching after I got out. Hmm. What did you teach? I taught, well, for years I taught uh, math and science and finished up teaching safety education. Hmm. You say you have two degrees. Uh-huh. Uh, where'd you get your, where'd you go to college? Oklahoma State University. Got my BS and Master of Science. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma State. Yeah. Um, now you were overseas four years, you say. Uh -huh. Did you ever hit the continent, and you stay in England and Scotland all the time? Yeah, in England and Scotland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And you were a tech sergeant in charge of the wards mm -hmm. in the hospital. Mm -hmm. What were your duties in charge of the ward? Well, uh, try to help get him. Uh, to the operating room to to uh, amputate his leg or arm or to save it or to see that help the nurse sew the guy up or give him a shot or uh, read his chart and uh, see that he gets a proper diet uh, dietitian uh, mm -hmm. see what kind of food he has to have and uh, I. Uh, had to be responsible to see that all all those things were done. Now, does that make you a, a qualified yeah. nurse or licensed nurse or in the army? It would. In the army, I don't know what the qualifications of a civilian would be. What LPN? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, after the army is over, we. Then I took and rehabilitated a lot of the, a lot of the soldiers, you know, uh, teaching them exercise and how to mm -hmm. walk and and uh, preparing the the worst one to be sent home yeah. back to the states. What was VE Day like? 
Oh, it was uh, just like a, uh, I've thought of this many times, it was like uh, a tornado here. Uh, they describe so much, it's just as quiet. You can't hear nothing just before the storm. Seem like the press. All letters, communications to the United States have stopped. Uh, there was no, uh, no newspaper, radio communications. And uh, of course, uh, everything was blacked out. There, we couldn't have lights, you know. You had to have a blacked inside, you know. We was underground too a lot. And uh, uh, <clears throat> just like a real still, quiet day, until the storm hit, and then uh, it was, uh, you could hear the uh, planes and the ships, uh, uh, the guns, uh, just like his, the country is going to fall to pieces, you know, no ways. Now, was that D Day? Mm hmm. Okay. D Day. See, they shelled uh, normally Beachhead, you know. About 12 hours, yeah. Uh, with ships, then the planes came in and dropped bombs, and then the troops went in. That was June 6th. And then we sent in medics to pick up the wounded, yeah. you know, and they never did give the true figures. Uh, they claim that here in the United States that, uh, that the, they reported light casualties, but they weren't. We paid a dear price for that beachhead. How many did we lose in the beachhead? Don't remember the exact. I, I did know once, so uh, up in the thousands. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, was the hospital ever attacked in Scotland? Ever bombed? Uh, yes, uh, because uh, you couldn't, uh, at night, they would send buzz bombs. Hitler developed that buzz bomb. That's what mm -hmm. we was afraid of. There were a lot of Red Cross places, a lot of places hit in London. Uh, a lot of damage done at, at the hospitals as well as other places. Is that the V2 rocket? Uh, V1 rocket, wasn't it? Whichever. We call it the buzz bomb. Okay. What about the V2, the big rocket? That, that's the one that he developed it. I don't think they ever perfected that. Too much, okay. did they? Then I'm not sure whether they did or not. No, I think the buzz bombs was uh, was uh, the biggest one, and mm -hmm. uh, the sirens, you know, was on all the time. You know, that was the alert, alert you that the buzz bombs. And that was the Battle of Britain. Yeah, Battle of Britain. What part of Scotland were you in? Uh, in Glasgow. Glasgow. There's where I set up the African hospitals. I took my men up there. We were more closer to London. We went up there and after we landed, we went up there and set up hospitals on mm -hmm. Glasgow for the patients from North Africa to receive them. What was VE Day like? When Germany surrendered, well, you, you there weren't there weren't real no. Uh, you'd be surprised, you know. Uh, uh, normally, a uh, an extreme something extreme uh, activity that we have here in America, you know, everybody be dancing in the streets and drinking and everything. It, it was just as uh, normal, they weren't, you know, everybody was wore out, you know, they were tired. Well, thank goodness it's over. Mm -hmm. Thank thank God it's over. I didn't think it ever would ever get it settled, but finally we did. That was the attitude. It was just a quiet, they, they, they accepted it just, uh, Quiet and orderly, mm -hmm. yeah. No, no big deal. Hmm. No, it 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 grew on you though as time went on. You know, 
the, the pleasure in it, uh, the satisfaction of coming home, those of us who made it, yeah. uh, gradually build up to the momentum, you know, where we we did feel real good about being older. Mm -hmm. uh, on the, uh, the second reason, Joe, for that feeling was that we were all scared to death. We had points to get out. A lot of us had enough points, you know. You went on a point system. Yeah. How do you get points? For uh, time longevity, serving over there, each stripe was six months. Uh, we were scared to death we were going to be sent to Japan, you know. They uh, they told us over there that a lot of us would probably have to go from Europe to Japan. And that's that's another thing that contributed to uh, uh, us not celebrating so enthusiastically. Yeah. Did you? And then was, when they dropped that bomb, of course, about the time they surrendered over there, I got word that my brother was killed in the Pacific. And that, mm -hmm. uh, of course, battle. Uh, he's in the Marines. Yeah. And. Uh, that didn't uh, contribute to the enthusiasm. Yeah. Did you receive orders for Japan? Stern was to get home. Mm -hmm. How did the point system work? How many points for each six months of? You got one point for every six months, and you had to have uh, uh, you had to have uh, I think the minimum you got a point for every six months, two for a year. You had to have a minimum of six points, two one for every six months, two for a year. Do you get points for being wounded or anything? Uh, yes. Yes, you cut that down. Uh, uh, if you're wounded or got the Purple Heart, uh, you, that was good for one year, probably a year, year and a half, I've forgotten now. Hmm. And you had to have at least six points to be sent back to the States? You had to have at least uh, six, yes. Yeah. How many points did you get out with? I had the maximum. I had eight. Uh -huh. I had eight, eight stripes. What was the highest rank you attained in? Tech sergeant. Tech sergeant. Mm -hmm. That's equivalent to what? Uh, staff sergeant. Buck mm -hmm. sergeant. Or? Tech staff sergeant. Staff sergeant. Mm -hmm. The pay. The pay is the same. When you heard they dropped the bomb, what was your first reaction? In Japan? Yeah. That's when we celebrated. That's when we really was very elated. We knew that we could come home. Those did, you knew what the, did you know what the bomb was? No. We hadn't heard. When they first told you, did tell you, did you believe it? No. Uh, most of us... Uh, thought it was a joke, you know, at first. And then, of course, they kept uh, verifying it by what little communications we had in, in the newspapers. And uh, finally, uh, we, we finally convinced us that America did have a bomb and it was effective and that the Japans did, Japanese did surrender. And, uh, and uh, I, I believe that we were much, much, more elated over that than we were the war over in Europe. Mm -hmm. We knew that was coming, coming. We knew we had the, uh, we were on the offensive and uh, we knew that the Germans, uh, it was just a matter of time, so we kindly expected that but didn't know when, but that we had the fear that we was all gonna have to go to Japan, you know, because they told us that there weren't nobody left in, back in America to fight young young men that they were taking older mm -hmm. older men. And, uh, how many 
How many Americans were killed in World War II? Any idea? Uh, I knew the figure f for a long time, but I wouldn't want to. Wouldn't want to be. I wanted it would be uh, subject to be corrected, but I, I think it was two and a half million, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Over two million. Yeah. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. <clears throat> Do you think we should start something like the CCC today? I have a... I was interviewed by one of the local newspapers here, and I have a clipping in there on my feelings on it. Uh, I've been working on that. Uh, I've on a, I represent Oklahoma on this committee, and uh, we have a bill in Congress. It's passed the House, and it's in the Senate now. And uh, it looks like they're going to pass it, but we're disappointed. Uh, they're going to uh, they're going to have it where the boys can stay at home and and go to their work instead of making it an army atmosphere and having control over their lives. So uh, it would appear to me uh, my impression uh, is that. Uh, it won't be as effective, but I think there's a tremendous need for that now uh, to take these boys off from the street and uh, those so many unemployed boys and uh, so many of them uh, uh, need uh, further education. A lot of them need uh, proper food and uh, a little discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when we were in, we no alcohol was permitted in, in our in, on our in our camp. And in the first place, uh, most of us didn't know what it was. We'd heard of moonshine uh, liquor, but uh, we wouldn't have the money to buy it in, in the second place. And mm -hmm. uh, we learned to live without it, and we had our own entertainment, and we got along fine. And I see a, a, uh, I see a, uh, a great opportunity out there to form another CCC, mm -hmm. similar, CCC number two, they call it. Were there any women in CCC? No. Mm -hmm. uh, the subject, I've been asked that question, if we get a CCC now, would women be welcome? And, uh, and, I, uh, and I said they would be, but I think they they definitely should be segregated like they are in mm -hmm. some of the army services. I don't think it would be practical at all to be uh, put together. You just work in the three areas, Colorado, Oklahoma, and Wyoming? Yes. Mm -hmm. How long did you work in Wyoming? Uh, about two years. Two years? Mm -hmm. And that was? About, no, two and a half years. Mm -hmm. You know, you built dams and cut ice and what else in Wyoming? That's about, that's, about, that's all we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of them uh, put in telephone poles built uh, telephones and high lines for mm -hmm. the first time from one town to the other. As a matter of fact, we're having our reunion up there in, in July, Joe, this mm -hmm. year. Yep. Several of us who are still surviving. We, we had, uh, they've had this as their seventh year. Last year was the first year I had opportunity to go and, and uh, it's very uh, enjoyable. We have a lot of nostalgia and and uh, we're not as active as we used to be, but we get together and have a lot of fun and just relax and yeah. display our pictures. By the way, you talk about pictures, you remind me uh, when we get through to get these pictures. Yeah. Is there a national CCC organization? Definitely, and I'm a member of it. Let me. So, in California, got together in 78 and, and formed a a national organization, we got together and wrote up the bylaws. 
there was 48 of us. Now we've we're, we've uh, reached a little over 15,000 of us, and it's Good. growing by leaps and bounds. Good. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. it sure is. Yeah. And uh, the journal, uh, we get it each month. Your your father would get twelve dollars worth of enjoyment out of that. Somebody writes a good article or two in it, and uh, there's all there's a lot of interesting information in that all the time. I just wished I could bring you up to date. Yeah, as a what's matter happened. of fact, I'd like to get two memberships. I'd like to get one for the archives here at the state museum. Well, would you? Yeah, because uh, we're trying to, we want to collect material on the CCC for the archives, because there's a big interest now oh, in the yeah. CCC. And that way we can keep the journals and people write, you know, stories about what they did. Well, could I deed this book to the, what if they'd want this book? Definitely. Huh? Definitely. Wouldn't I? I get if the kids, I don't know where the kids want my kids, children. Okay. My grand, uh, I'm going to have my first grandson in about two weeks good. in distant cloud nine. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. It wouldn't have been the same thing. It had been the same thing out there. At, uh, of course, you got this in my own. Yeah. But this is the same thing. You had your barracks where you slept, and here's your mess hall and latrine and uh, the work areas, recreation hall. And now, so what are the work areas? At well, that's the, uh, like going out on the field, the surveyors. Yeah. Engineers, maintenance crews. Okay. Do you have a pencil I could use? Sure. All I have is a pen. Sure. What I'd like to do is write, like here, mess hall on the white border down here, barracks, the trains. You want those pictures? Yeah. Huh? Let's see what you want. Here's uh, most of the boys out there, a lot of them out there at 875. There's not a bunch of them. You know, I'm just sick I didn't preserve that. You know, that's 40, old, 40 years old now. Now, we can make copies of all these. Can you? And then we'll return these photographs to you. All mm right. -hmm. For you. Um, gosh. Mm. No, I remember now. Have you got anything to do? Here I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have I aged any? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> is there any way, are you smart enough to know, is there any way that, uh, is any, it cost you a fortune, but could you, is there any way a guy could get that, have that reproduced and not have those cracks? Sure. Uh, we have a photographer and he used a piece of glass. And he flattened the picture out with a piece of glass and then copied it. Oh. Well, I mean, uh, I'd like to have a copy of it. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, you don't want this one, I'm sure. This is a championship ball team. There's the captain. Are you in there? I'd give anything in the world to know if that guy was living. He's the best guy in the world. It's Captain. What's his name? Captain Barry. Where's he from? I don't know. I'd give anything to know if he lived through the war or not. Was he from Oklahoma? This guy got blown to pieces in a tank. He well, went into welding. They opened the torch up, lit it. Can you imagine? And no supervision. Went in to weld a tank, gasoline tank. I mean, a huge. And they couldn't really find nothing in him to burn him. That's tragic. Who are you, people? Right there. Can you identify any of the other guys besides Captain Bear? Every one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of them. Yeah. Here's Boone from Anadarko, Anderson from Choctaw, Crystal Deaton from Weewoka, Midwest City, uh, Jared Haney. Here's a guy that lives in Warden Wong. You wouldn't know him. Big fat. He's 67 years old. Big fat. I, I said, Rose, my wife, laughed. I said, I can't imagine Paul being 67 years old. <laughs> uh, we've had more fun over this. Let's just put all these uh, yeah. back in there. How many of these you want? All of them. Oh, do you? Yep. Okay.
We'll make copies and now this this is the same as in Oklahoma City. Yeah. Okay. But the same part. setup. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Same thing. Hmm. They set it up the same same yeah. thing. Uh, we put it right in there. Yeah. Get small enough now. Oh, yeah, you're good. One. They've been taking in and out. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Don't. Uh, they don't have to. Come on. Man's going after. They're getting so old. Uh, yeah, we need to get these coffees to make sure they're preserved. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite memory of the CCC camps? Favorite memory? You mean now? Yeah, what do you remember about the camps? Uh, well, it stands out pretty strongly. The, uh, the, uh, the fellowship, the association I had with my... Uh, my barrack buddies, my co-workers, living and and uh, struggling together, our our uh, our association together, and uh, reminiscing, looking back, the nostalgia days. Uh, they give you. I was the youngest one in camp, possibly the youngest one, because mm -hmm. uh, I got in two years younger. Uh, they all gave me so much encouragement. And uh, I've fortunately associated with, with some of the best. And uh, that... Uh, Encouraged me to be to want to be something. I, that's the reason I turned out to be a school teacher. Is after the CC days, my army days. I I wanted to be around young people and help them. And uh, my association with the CCs and the army boys uh, uh, gave me that encouragement. I think that's my biggest thrill. My association with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it gave you a lift. It, it, it they encouraged me. I got homesick, and, and uh, most of them encouraged you to do the right things, the right things in life. You know, I never was a fanatic, but I'm a Christian, and uh, I try to live. Uh, for the golden rule, and uh, I'm always trying to help other people. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> since I retired from teaching, I don't know how many former students I've had to uh, tell me how rewarding it was uh, that I have taught them something or said something to them in the classroom that's inspired them to go on to be somebody. I'm talking about doctors and lawyers. I have doctors and lawyers and dentists uh, here in Oklahoma City and legislators out there at the Capitol now as former students of mine. And uh, I think that that's uh, the most rewarding thing is to feel like that I've, I've done something to contribute something like I did in the CCs. I think uh, I might have contributed something. Mm -hmm. mm. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Very good. Um, where did you do most of your teaching? John Marshall, Oklahoma City, 26 years, mostly. I taught three years in Oregon and three years, uh, four or five years in the country schools in Oklahoma. But most of it's right here in Oklahoma City. 
You say you taught math and science. Science. And and safety education. When did you start teaching? When? When? 1948. 1948. Mm -hmm. And when did you retire? Last year. Last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, 82, 81? 82. 82. How many kids do you have? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. What's Two's your wife's name? Rose. Rose. What was her name before you got married? Long with. Long with. What she, you mean she's her? a teacher. She is. Met her in a dairy, milking cows, <laughs> east of <Oklahoma City. laughs> Isn't that interesting? Oh, did you work in a dairy? No, she did. She did. She went to she was in college. We met in college. She was in college. She'd get up at three o'clock and milk cows and then drive to school all day. Isn't that something? She this taught school all the time, yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. And we have two daughters of teachers. My son lives about your age. Yeah. You graduated when? Sixty four. You graduated the same year my daughter did, my oldest daughter. Sixty four. Mm -hmm. And uh she's thirty six or thirty five. I'm thirty six. Yeah, thirty six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You all graduated you born forty six? Yeah. Yeah. July? September. September. Yeah. Daddy got home from the war in January and I made my appearance in September. <laughs> I got home and Joy was born nine months today. <laughs> Where's your daddy at in service? Uh he was in Europe. He was in a repo depot. Repo depot. And in Europe? Yeah. He sat down. And he went in Italy and all I'm going to write on here two memberships. Okay. Thank you.